Look at Numbers chapter 11. Let's start off in verse 24, Numbers chapter 11, and then we'll read verse 24. I am going to give you several passages in the Bible. I have uh, several sermons about the filling of the Spirit, actually. I've done several already, and I'm determined to perhaps, Lord willing, turn it into a series now, since I already preached about three or four just on the filling of the Spirit. This will be my fifth, and it was conjured up just now. We're going to see several people in the Bible, how they were filled with the Holy Spirit. And I think you could use some Holy Spirit after a lot of repression. Amen, Pastor. Numbers chapter 11, verse 24. And Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord, and gathered the seventy men of the elders of the people, and set them round about the tabernacle. The Lord came down in the cloud and spake unto him, and took of the Spirit that was upon him, and gave it unto the seventy elders. And it came to pass that when the Spirit rested upon them, they prophesied and did not cease. But there remained two of the men in the camp. The name of the one was Eldad, and the name of the other Medad. And the Spirit rested upon them. And they were of them that were written, but went not out unto the tabernacle. And they prophesied in the camp. And there ran a young man and told Moses and said, Eldad and Medad do prophesy in the camp. And Joshua, the son of Nun, the servant of Moses, one of his young men answered and said, My Lord, Moses, forbid them. And Moses said unto him, Envious thou for my sake? Would God that all the Lord's people were prophets, and that the Lord would put his spirit upon them? And Moses got him into the camp, he and the elders of Israel. Now in this passage, the Lord decides to give his Holy Spirit filling upon the people in the camp at verses 24 through 30. And these people, there were about 70 of the elders. So that just goes to show that if you feel like you're already past age, it's not too late for you. The Holy Spirit can still fill within you people who feel like you're at that elderly age, that you reach that limit, but God can fill within you all His Holy Spirit. It's never too late. It's never too late no matter how old you are. As you keep reading this passage though, it was out of bounds. It was totally different. Two people, all of a sudden, they started to be filled with the Holy Spirit and they were not part of the 70 elders at verses 24 through 25. God originally wanted to do it with 70, of the, 70 elders, but then all of a sudden, these two people out of nowhere decided to be filled with the Holy Spirit themselves. And when they got filled, Joshua tried to forbid them. He said, my Lord Moses, forbid them. And then Moses instead replies to him, are you envying? Do you have envy there, Joshua? And I think that there's a lot of liberals and atheists and in this wicked state of California and within our country, and this can include Republican conservatives, etc., and a bunch of silly, st stupid Christians who n should know better, and they forbid believers. They forbid believers. They restrict them from having church service altogether. That these wicked people, they would try to stop the Holy Spirit filling within you all and say, forbid them. You know what their problem is? They're jealous. You know what? They don't have the joy of the Lord like you do. Yeah, that's good, brother. That when no matter how many times they kick you down and beat you down and punch you down, that you still get back up and you still serve God. That's right, they hate that. Amen. They hate that with full jealousy and envy. And because of that, Moses said, would that all the Lord's people were prophets and that the Lord would fill His Spirit upon them. That should be the reaction. Is that it shouldn't be just this pastor. It shouldn't be just some people in this church. It should be every single one of you, especially in this time of day and age, we're in a repressed area and where it's getting even more wicked and heinous that every single one of you counts for the battle. We're being filled with the Spirit of the Lord. Every one of you counts today. And we're in this together, church. Your presence, just you being here today, is where you're rallying up and where it counts. Where you try to encourage the pastor counts, where you sing it counts, and where you try to pass out tracts it counts, where you try to soul win to other people it counts, where you help out with the tag, where you help out with cleaning. And I know that it may seem like little things to you and you're not doing much, but it counts a lot because there are a gazillion other Bible-believing churches out there 
who have more freedom than we do, and they get encouraged just by our testimony in this wicked area that we are at to Amen. keep proclaiming the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Are, you, are you filled with the power of the Holy Spirit today? If you could use some of that, God will give you some of that today, Lord willing. Let's pray. God, my Father, wash away my sins with your precious and most holy blood. What we need now more than ever is a filling power of your Holy Spirit for you to move in and where every one of us would proclaim the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and be able to win souls, keep this ministry going, protect us from the wicked ones, protect us from wicked trolls. I pray that we'll be able to continue onward for you and that these people will be thus encouraged and be able to keep pressing on no matter how tough how tough the enemy attacks. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. As we may have heard, there are some churches already who are broken down, who are in tears, who feel utterly repressed, and they are not able to function and run wholeheartedly as a church, especially the county that we come from. It's very, very, it's getting very, very dangerous. Mm -hmm. And so because of that, it does put a frustration but it's not going to dampen our spirit and it's not going to kill the Holy Spirit. If they're going to kill the Holy Spirit of God within you, they're going to have to do more than just shut you down. And as a matter of fact, there's not even all the powers of hell itself can ever take away the Holy Spirit inside you. No matter how much power that the powers of hell may have, they can never take away... From you because it's eternally secured and that's a doctrine from the Word of God OSAS is still true and they can never take away the Holy Spirit from you so it's going to take a lot more than that it's gonna take a lot more than fining imprisonment and shutting churches down because the Holy Spirit is still inside you while you're locked up in prison and singing in the Holy Ghost maybe at that time you can break the law and sing is when you're locked up in prison and you give a song to the Lord just like Paul and Silas when they were locked up. Oh, we're locked up anyway. We might as well yeah. sing for the Lord. So let's look at several cases over here where these people are filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and see based upon what reasons why they are filled. The first one over here is at Numbers chapter 11. And we see that at verse 26 here, that Eldad and Medad, that these two people, they were able to be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit themselves. Why were they able to be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit? They were not part of what is normal at verse 24 through 25. Again, what is normal is God says, I'm going to have these 70 elders. And then these two people out of nowhere at verse 26 just start to be filled with the Spirit. So what's the point? The point is to be filled with the Holy Spirit is that it has to do things where it's out of norm. Mm -hmm. Out of norm. Yeah. So then if you want the Holy Spirit to fill within you, if you're like a normal functioning person, then the Holy Spirit can't use you. That's good, brother. Sometimes we get those out of bounders in our church and they're a little overzealous, let's say. And we could calm them down a bit and they got to follow the rules, you know. I mean, we got some Simon Peters here, right? You know. Taking a sword, I'll, I'll defend you, Jesus, and then you cut off a person's ear by accident, you know? Sometimes you get those little overzealous people going on. But then what's going on over here is that despite of being out of bounds, and yeah, they may be over, uh, overzealous, but those are the people the Lord uses out of norm. Yeah, that's right, right. Out of norm people. If you go by how the normal flow of society works or the normal, normal flow of churches going under this uh, situation that we're going in, then the Lord can't use you. Good. The Holy Spirit can't use a church when you go by things of what is normal. No, you got to go by what is out of norms. Right. You know what is out of norm? You being an idiot, holding a sign and preaching the gospel of the Lord Jesus Amen. Christ, telling that there is a real hell, a real heaven, that sin is real, the blood of Jesus Christ is real, and that the gift of God, salvation in Him is free and secured and eternally Amen. theirs. Amen. That's out of norm. That's out of norm. Yeah, it, it is out of norm that you are holding a sign that says heaven or hell rather than BLM. That is very out of norm. That's right. yeah. It's so out of norm that, you know, what you're doing for the Lord Jesus Christ is to, uh, when you give them the gospel, hand them a tract that you said, if you were to die today, are you 100% sure that you would go to heaven? That's totally out of norm. You don't do that. It is out of norm that you uh, put a bumper sticker in your car that Jesus saves... 
There is no hope in the Pope. Amen. Jesus is alive. Muhammad is dead. Amen. That is totally out of norm. It makes people uncomfortable in this area. Amen. And it makes things worse where it's totally out of norm that you put one bumper sticker, two, three, four, five, and then you fill it all over your car like an ice cream truck. And yeah, they may be a little crazy and a little wacko, but those are the people God uses and you're filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Out of norm. You're all nuts. You're all crazy yeah. right now. And maybe that's why the Holy Spirit says, you know what, I'm going to stay here a little longer. Yeah. They need me right yes, now. These good. people are so out of norm. They're so wacko. Yeah. They love me too much, but yeah, I kind of like that, and I'll help them behave. So I'll stay a little longer with them. Bless God. Hallelujah. All right, go to the book of Judges. We'll look at the book of Judges, chapter 3. If you look at every single judge that the Lord raised up, it is interesting that it says the Spirit of the Lord came upon them. Yeah. Nearly every judge. Or a lot of judges at least. A lot of the judges, when the Lord raised them up, it says the Spirit of the Lord came upon them. Do you know why? Because let's look at Judges chapter 3. So if you want the filling power of the Holy Spirit, you got to get out of norm, all right? So get out of normal society, walk by faith a little bit more, don't be stupid and use wisdom, but you got to get out of norm. And if you're never out of norm, then the Holy Spirit can't use you. And another way that the Holy Spirit can use you is found in this passage. Let's look at the second area here. Verse 8, Therefore the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel, and he sold them into the hand of Kushan Rishathaim. There, I got it. Bless God. All right, king of Mesopotamia. And the children of Israel served Tushan Rishathaim eight years. And when the children of Israel cried unto the Lord, the Lord raised up a deliverer to the children of Israel, who delivered them, even Othniel, the son of Kenaz, Caleb's younger brother. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon him. And he judged Israel and went out to war. And the Lord delivered Kushan Rishathaim, king of Mesopotamia, into his hand, and his hand prevailed against Chushan Rishathaim. All right, the Lord had to just put it there eight times for some weird reason. But over there, you notice that this uh, wicked king who oppressed the children of Israel, that the Lord raised them up a deliverer to deliver them from the king of Mesopotamia, and they won the victory. But it had to take the Lord picking a judge and filling him with the power of the Holy Spirit. And you might say, I want some of that. What is it that Othniel had that the Spirit of the Lord came upon him? Well, we don't see anything here about uh, the Lord raised up Othniel where Othniel had to do something himself to get the Spirit of the Lord. Now, I'm sure that he did, but the Bible doesn't record it here. It says the Lord decided to pick the person and the Lord decided to fill it within that person. Amen. But what made, the, what made the Lord move in to fill within that person? It's because of verse 9. If, they, if there was no verse 9, the Lord couldn't move in and pick the person and the judge and fill within him. The children of Israel cried unto the Lord. If you want the filling power of the Holy Spirit, we do know that it comes by prayer. But it's m much more than that. It comes through desperation and a reliance where you're like, God, I cannot survive literally tomorrow unless you move in and fill within me the power of your Holy Spirit. Yeah. And when there's that so much of a reliance and a need and a cry, you might say the words, but your heart don't really mean it. See, so then the Lord has to teach your flesh a lesson. A lesson, and at verse 9, the children of Israel, it took the lesson of being oppressed by the wicked. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Of being in slavery, of suffering, immense pain, imprisonment, taxation, slavery, etc. And it had to take all that for the children of Israel to finally not just cry to the uh, to pray to the Lord, but to cry out this time. And they when they cried, they heard a great cry. You know what raised up? The mighty miracles of the Spirit of the Lord moving within Moses parting the Red Sea. Because God had to choose Moses to begin with. Even when he didn't want to. But why, but why was it that the Lord chose him and filled within him? Because he says, the cry of my people, I heard them for hundreds of years. And what we need is God's people to cry a little louder. And to pray a little harder. 
And maybe because of the San Francisco Bay Area, God knows. But I didn't want the task. I didn't want this job. I was surrendered to actually give up my life in North Korea of all places. And then the Lord pulled a dirty trick on me that he says, that's San Francisco Bay Area. You're going to pastor a church over there. I didn't want that task. And it is definitely not of my own abilities that the Holy Spirit fills within me. But why would the Lord still use me? And why would the Lord still use me to reach people online? Why would our church survive? Why would it continue? Times where the church could have closed and I would have quit in the towel. There was still that one person that came in and encouraged and prayed or gave a love offering to me and made me live the next week and the next years. What made the Lord? What made the Lord choose me out of everyone? Definitely not of my own ability because there must have been some Christian here who gave a cry to the Lord and said I'm searching for truth I want to know salvation I tried everything in life God God will you hear my cry and I guess God heard your prayers and he planted a church right here Amen. 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 and then God had to start something online too because he heard their cries how many how many testimony after testimony of people who ended up in our church said because I was searching for truth I cried to the Lord. I said, Lord, will you show me something over here? How many onliners have we have to receive email after comment and email after comment that I've been searching for truths for so many years and through prayer. And I finally said, Lord, help me find something. And that's when the Lord intervened. Yeah. A lot of you, how you finally found truth is because you finally cried out to the Lord, show me something, and the Lord says, cry a little louder. Let's see how much you really need it. And then he put you through a trial, and you were searching a little longer, a little longer, so that God can really see if you really wanted the truth that much, you really wanted him that much, and when you really wanted it, God's like, okay, I'll give it to you. Here it is, and that's why you're able to stick into the church a little longer compared to other people. You know? So that's why God has to send up COVID-19 maybe. Perhaps maybe that's why God had to shut down some churches, maybe. And perhaps God has to remind you again your need for him because you forgot your need for him. Because you got used to the church environment. You got used to serving him. And because you got so used to that, maybe the Lord had to remind you, let's take away some of the things and see how much you need me again. How much you need this church that I've given to you again. Need you, Lord. We need to hear that cry to the Lord. And then even, just like the children of Israel, even though that they fail, and even though that the pastor or the leader does not even want to do it or nothing of his own action, the Holy Spirit, you can't stop his feeling once he chooses it. And the only way he can choose and fill it is that there was a cry to begin with. Because even if I mess up or you mess up, and then we're put out of the way, if the Lord already picks something for the task, he's going to raise up even the rock to cry out, if you won't. Right. Let's look at the book of Judges. Let's look at the book of Judges. We're going to look at Judges chapter 13 over here. Judges chapter 13. The third place where the Holy Spirit will fill within an individual... is Samson's life. And Samson, he was a fleshly wicked person. So if you feel like that you can't be filled with the Holy Ghost, I mean, Samson was just full of the flesh. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to show you an interesting passage. I'm going to show you a passage where Samson was sinning, going by his flesh, and the Holy Spirit filled within him and used him anyway on that. In the middle of his sin, the Holy Spirit filled him and used him. Oh, Pastor, you're getting into blasphemy there. Well, let's look it over here, all right? We're going to look at verse 24. And the woman bare a son and called his name Samson, and the child grew, and the Lord blessed him. And the Spirit of the Lord began to move him at times. I like this passage at verse 25. The Spirit of the Lord began to move him at times. See, not constantly, but at times. You might say, why is that? Because Samson... He was not properly filled within the Holy Spirit. As a matter of fact, he was going mostly by his flesh. So then the Holy Spirit had to pick at times where he can fill him and then use him. And verse 25, the Spirit of the Lord began to move him at times in the camp of Dan between Zorah and Eshtal. Now why is that? Because look at Judges chapter 14. 
Now look at Samson. He sins over here and that the Holy Spirit fills within him. The Bible says over here that when you look at verse... 18, the men of the city said unto him on the seventh day before the sun went down, What is sweeter than honey, and what is stronger than a lion? And he said unto them, If ye had not plowed with my heifer, ye had not found out my riddle. So basically Samson said that about his new, uh, newly wed wife. All right, now that's not the spirit filling of the Lord right there, obviously. That is fleshly. That is actually wrong, man, all right? You don't do that with your wives, obviously. That is sin. But look how the Lord used this. Keep reading at verse uh, 19. The Spirit of the Lord, what? Came upon him in the middle of his fleshly anger. And he went down to Ashkelon and slew, slew 30 men of them and took their spoil. If that's not enough, if you look at verse 6, Samson was walking toward his sin. But, but then there was a lion who tried to attack him. And then the Spirit of the Lord came upon him and he tore that lion. And Samson, he wasn't going to church at verse 6, actually, if you go over there. He went down to see an unbelieving pagan woman. In the middle of his sin, the Spirit of the Lord filled him. You might say, why? That doesn't make sense. You know why? Because God already talked about it at chapter 13. Chapter 13. It's because why? Because if you look at 13, 24 through 25, the Spirit of the Lord chose him and filled him. On what way? If you read all the way, which I won't read it, but you can read it when you, ha when you do it. If you read from verses uh, 3 all the way through verse 5, it's because the Lord says that I'm going to have this person born with a gift and a talent where he will have superhuman strength. And so I'm going to use that superhuman strength for my glory. And then Samson, he Amen. instead used his gift for his flesh and his sin that he was born with. And God's like, well, I don't care. I'm still going to use you anyway. Amen. I gave a promise. You are all born with your own gift and talent, and you use it for sin nearly every single day. Everyone uses that to chase for the pleasures of this world, but then the Lord, you know what he says? I don't care. I'm still going to use you one way or the other. And even though that you might, let's say, let's say that you might have a gift of where you're singing for the wicked world, and then you are born with that, but you use that uh, singing ability of yours to sing for the wicked world, for contemporary music, and God's like, well, I don't care. Why don't you just stay there a little longer? I'll hone that talent a little more, and I'll use that voice for my glory one day. You're going to sing for the church. You're going to use it to glorify and help. You're going to glorify me and edify others with that singing voice. That's what the Lord's going to do. Maybe some of you might say, well, I'm just too slow. And hey, that's probably a gift the Lord gave to you. And some of you might say, well, I'm just too slow and I cannot think quick. So that's the reason why that I have to go back to, instead of going to a, a really uh, a task or a job, it may be fast-paced, high-end, like a typical New Yorker or San Francisco person doing things at the moment. You may not be like that. You may be slow, so you might say, I'm uh, called out to be other things. So then a lot of people, they just actually give up in school or in jobs and they get into drugs. And then they get into drugs, and then I guess their mind gets even slower after that. And it really affects them. But the Lord says, I don't care. I'm going to use that, what you call slowness, for my glory. I can't do anything fast-paced, Lord. And maybe the Lord says, well, maybe I could use that slow mind of yours to read through the Bible at a slow pace. And then just concentrate on my words. And then take time in praying with me. I'm going to use that for my glory. Amen, what you think to be a handicap... Or even if you're using that gift and talent of yours for your flesh, you'd be surprised how many times that gift and that talent of yours, you accidentally used it for God. At times you didn't know. A lot of people, they come to our church and then they help us a lot in the church. And some of you might know what I'm talking about. Some of you who started coming to our church, help out our church, I would sometimes come to you and say, thank you for being a blessing. And you would go, on what? I don't even know what I'm a blessing on. Exactly! You know what that's an example of? You have no idea on the details 
that you did that was a blessing to the pastor or the church that they know, but you don't know. And that's how God, the Holy Spirit moves is that it's because those little details that you were, uh, you are born to do that you would normally do in your everyday life. That was a gift and the talent that the Lord was using where you were using it by accident and had no idea. You had no idea that the things you would do, just coming to church, just talking to people or anything that you are just anything of your character and personality you're just born with. That's good, that brother. the Lord somehow transformed that and said, that's actually being used for my glory, and you're being filled with the Spirit of the Lord. Good preaching. That's good. You know how the Holy Spirit fills you? Not at all times where you know where He's moving. At times where it's by accident and you don't see it. That's good. That's the Holy Spirit moving. Now, what are you using your gift and talents on, huh? Maybe you should use them a little more, huh? Technology skills? Getting along with people skills? Is it singing? Is it preaching? What is it of yours? Just being here? You never know how the Lord's using that. So what are you using your gift and talents on? I think we wasted too much time, especially in this COVID oppression that we're going through. You wasted your gift and talents and skills on the wrong things. Let's start using them for the Lord. And the Spirit of the Lord can fill within you. But I'm fleshly and I mess up. So does Samson, but the Lord used it anyway. Now get back to work. Use it for the glory of God. 1 Samuel 11. 1 Samuel 11. I hope this is encouraging some of you Amen. on how you can be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. 1 Samuel chapter 11. Another thing how the Holy Spirit can fill you, and I think it's really working. Nothing gets the job done than anger for some weird reason. Nothing gets society moving and start taking action than anger. Especially during this COVID oppression, a lot more people are t trying to take action now, we notice. Look at 1 Samuel chapter 11. Verse 5, And behold, Saul came after the herd out of the field, and Saul said, What aileth the people that they weep? And they told him the tidings of the men of Jabesh. And the Spirit of God came upon Saul when he heard those tidings, and his anger was kindled greatly. Verse 7, Okay, I'm not saying for you to do this, but this is how the Holy Spirit used him. He took a yoke of oxen and hewed them in pieces and sent them throughout all the coasts of Israel by the hands of messengers, saying, Whosoever cometh not forth after Saul and after Samuel, so shall it be done unto his oxen. And the fear of the Lord fell on the people, and they came out with one consent. Oh, I would not approve of verse 7. The Holy Spirit, that's how he used him. Why would the Holy Spirit do that? Because he likes to do things out of your terms. Out of what makes you, out of what things that you deem to be proper and appropriate. And God says, no, let's go a little rebel here. Let's go a little bit where it's out of, uh, out of your norms. Because you always rebelled against me. So I like to rebel against human standards and see how you react. But verse 6, the Holy Spirit filled within him. Why? Because of anger. Why? Because a lot of times you got to be careful. The anger that comes out of you is 90% of the time fleshly. When you see anger in the Bible, more often it is used for the flesh than the spirit actually. But what about those times then that are uh, connected to the Holy Spirit, the anger? Those few times, those few exceptions. What is it? It's because we see it at verse 5. 5. People are hurting and suffering. If you look at verse 1, 2, and 3, the enemy is laughing. You know what gets God to answer prayer? Lord, think about what the enemies would think. Think about how your glory is being taken away by the wicked one. And if there's one thing that God prioritizes more than anything, it's his glory. That he's worshipped and he's honored as number one. And somebody tries to take that glory away from him and steal him. And then God's going, if you say that to the Lord and show it to the Lord, the Lord will say, okay, I'll answer that prayer of yours. If you take action that glorifies God, that tries to fight against the enemy who's stealing from the glory of God, you don't think that God's going to step in and intervene on your behalf? And he'll fill within you his Holy Spirit. Why would the Lord keep... Uh, I mean, we've seen enemies come and go who attack us online. Why is it that we're standing, the Lord's blessing us with fruit, and those, have, those, those enemies who tried to compete against us, who used to be bigger than us, and overwhelm us. Now they've been disgraced 
and dissipated into nothing. Why is that? Because we pray to him. Was it a fleshly prayer? Well, not when you say, Lord, look how the enemies are attacking your Bible-believing ministry. It's your ministry, not mine. If I pray that way, it's not my ministry. I could care less about myself, Lord. It's your ministry. They're disgracing the truth. They're disgracing your work, Heavenly Father. And they think that their work is right and that you're blessing theirs. And God's like, no, I'm not. Okay, I'm going to show. And then he crushes all our enemies online. He's been doing that over and over again. For those who try to troll inside our church, who try to find trouble with us, who try to shut us down. The wicked ones have fallen. Why? Because the Spirit of the Lord is in this place and you can't stop it. Amen, brother. Amen. Why would the Holy Spirit fill within this place? Because of arrogance and pride? Because it's me? No, because I am zero and nothing. And because I am nothing but a tool that says, Lord, if this is the work that you call me that I don't want to do, then I am de then I am determined no matter what that your work will be elevated and lifted high as number one above all other gods, above all other systems. I made that promise to the Lord before I became a pastor for some of you who did not know. Maybe that's why the Spirit just fell upon this place a little more and decided to keep it going. Amen. Now, if you want the Spirit of the Lord to fill within you, you need to have an anger against this wicked world. You know what? For some of you who saw me online, you know what finally caught the attention of some? Because of exposing the wickedness, exposing wrong doctrine. Amen. That's how it came out. Amen. Why? Because the Spirit of the Lord fills within somebody who is angry against this wicked system, Amen. against the wicked doctrines. You don't think the Lord's going to... Not going to bless and honor that. A lot of people feel uncomfortable about that. They leave and it's so new to them and they're troubled about it. But you got to understand this is that it may seem that way to you, but the Lord, he don't see it that way. The Lord, how he sees it as this is how it should be properly done. Why right. hasn't anyone done something like this? So I'm going to fill this place. I'm going to use this place. Amen. That's right. Amen. You think everyone says that Jesus was love? Uh, how many person, 99% of the people, how many people have I heard telling me in street preaching, in the church, and everywhere that I go that Jesus was loving and kind. He wasn't arrogant, mean like you. And they forget the story where Jesus actually whipped people. Yeah, and you yeah, better thank yeah. God that I don't know of a Bible-believing pre preacher who whipped somebody yet. <laughs> If we did that, then you'd probably be angry and leave the church. And I'd probably agree with you too. But Jesus did that. See, people don't pay attention. Anger is justified. Why? When there's something wicked and wrong. I don't get it. Why do you justify the riots, huh? And the chaos? How about that? Yeah. Why, do you, uh, why do you justify that kind of riot, chaos, and violence? Why? Because you don't understand how wicked our majority system is. See, you're not seeing how wicked this a governmental system, the school system, this liberal system is. That's your problem. If you see the wickedness more and more, anger rises up more and more. But if you don't see the wickedness more and more, the anger is completely diminished more and more. That's good. All right, let's look at the next passage over here. We're going to go to Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4. Let's look at our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ being full of the Holy Ghost, right? Do you know how he was filled with the power of the Holy Spirit? It is because of one thing. It's because sometimes the Lord just decides to give it to you even when you didn't even do a lot of things. But he decides to give it to you anyway. Why? Because you'll need the filling power of the Spirit when Satan tries to attack you. Amen. Why did the Holy Spirit move in within summer camp and fill within all of us to get ready for the attack after summer camp? Come on. Good. Verse 1, And Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost, see that? Returned from Jordan, led by the Spirit into where? Wilderness, being 40 days tempted of the devil. And in those days he did eat nothing. And when they were ended, he afterward hungered. How about that? You know why the Holy Spirit will choose with... Uh, choose to fill within you to be prepared for the demonic attacks. Why? Because you need every ounce of it. You'll need it. 
If you want to be filled within the power of the Holy Spirit, He needs warriors, not cowards. He needs warriors who are ready to say, Lord, I know that suffering is ahead, trial is ahead, but Heavenly Father, I have peace with you because you wouldn't give me a burden greater than I can bear, and you're going to take care of me, and I, you will give me the victory. So God, I rely on you, and guess what? You don't think the Holy Spirit fills within that person? He does. And then guess what happens after that? Well, after suffering, after trial, and a storm, and tears, and pain, the Holy Spirit leaves you. No, after that, then what happened at uh, verse 13? When the devil had ended all the temptation. he See, he decides to give up because he says, well, you know, I, I realize that fining you, and imprisoning you, and then kicking you out of church, and getting you, uh, shutting down your building is not going to stop you from loving Jesus, serving God, and spreading Bible-believing truth. So, I, I'm, I'm done, okay? I, I've tried to attack you for all this month, for all these years. You won't quit. And then he decides to end. He departed from him for a season. Yeah. So, it's not forever. He says, I'm going to come back. But the devil's saying, I'm going to come back, but right now I can't keep doing it with you. So I'm going to take a break. I'm going to take a break because you won't listen to me, says Satan. So I'm going to take a break and then I'll come back later and maybe I'll get you next time. So then when he goes off on the break, then what happens? The Holy Spirit left. Well, verse 14, Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee. Amen. You know what happens after the trial, after the tears, after the pain? The Holy Spirit says, let's do it again. I'm going to fill you again. All right, you ready? Yeah, I'm ready, Lord. Let's go. Woo! And then the devil starts to attack you. And then you're tired and wearied. And then you're beaten up and said, Lord, I need, Lord, oh man, it's so hard. And Holy Spirit's like, ready again? And you're like, you stop, let's do it, Lord. And Satan and you just go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And it's a battle that will not end until the rapture sounds. And God says, you done a good fight. I fought a good fight. I finished my course. I kept the faith. Good job. All right, time to go up home with me. Battle's not over until God says it's over. Till then, the Holy Spirit gave you a wonderful promise. He'll never leave you. He'll keep filling you. Even when you're down and you're tired, that's not a sign of the Holy Spirit leaving you. It's that He filled within you at the beginning to be prepared for the suffering, to be prepared for the pain. That's good. Wow, that's good. Go to Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. I hope you're getting something from this message so that, so that you don't get tired, discouraged, especially about how they're targeting churches and everything. That this will help you. Look at Acts chapter 2. Verse 4. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Why were the disciples here <coughs> at Acts 2 filled with the Holy Ghost? And then the result was, if you look at the last verse of the chapter, look at verse 47. Praising God, having favor with all the people, and the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Why did the Lord decide to do that? Huh? Add more people. Fill within them, fill within them the Holy Spirit. <coughs> Why did the Holy Spirit decide to give them such a powerful fruit and a result? Well, go back to chapter 1. Because they were street preaching, passing out tracts, singing hymns, running around the room. Look at uh, verse 13. When they were coming, they went up into an upper room. Verse 14. These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication. Verse 15. In those days, Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples and said, That's it. You know what happened? Well, Jesus said this. He didn't say go to war, win all the world, even though he said, he did tell them to go throughout all the world and preach, but he told them before you do this, see, this is what you don't want to hear. Before, what did he say? He said that at Acts chapter 1, verse 4, being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should what? Not. Depart from Jerusalem, but what? Wait, did you read that verse right? Does this say wait? Mm -hmm. Yes. You know how the Holy Spirit fills within you? 
Where's my summer camp, God? Where's my blowout? The church did not have a good day, Lord. We only had two people at church. Lord, oh, I thought you promised the power of the Holy Spirit. This don't look like it. No, he is. To fill within you the power of the Holy Spirit is by waiting. Amen. And everybody right now, they want to take action. And then some of them, this is important for you. Yes, we need those people who are out of norm. Yes, we need these people to uh, take their ground and take a stand for Jesus Christ. Don't get me wrong. But if you think that there is no limitation to that, and the Lord does not want you to wait, then you're dead wrong. God wants you to just sit still and wait. Amen. Those frustrated days where you see small results, you see nothing, the enemy laughing at you, and the Christians being more discouraged. You know what God wants? Wait. To just simply wait. And that's how the Holy Spirit can use you. Oh, San Jose Bible Baptist Church, thank you so much where you have now 220,000 subscribers online and we've seen over a thousand souls get saved. And I mean, praise the Lord Jesus Christ, it took waiting on year number one where we had less than 10 people. And then when we were growing after three years, then it dropped again and we dropped so low to a point where I hit two people. After. I mean, imagine you growing from one year, two year, three year. And then you think it's going to grow just a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. And then you're predicting 10 years later, I should hit this amount of people. But then you lose it all and drop to two people. You think that's how the Lord blessed us with fruit? Or he says, Gene needs to learn patience a little yeah. more. Amen, amen. He needs to learn to take a hit. Wow. Not just stab the enemy. And then you're winning the war, but to take a hit. Right. Bam. Bam. Bam, 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 bam. A little bit more. A little bit more. Let's see how much of a tough soldier you are. And that's how you can become a stronger soldier. And the Holy Spirit can fill within you a little bit more. And you got the power to fight back. Why? Because you've been hit too many times. And yep. you experience that. And you know what it's like. Yep. And you're ready. If God keeps spoiling you with blessing and victory without loss, cost, or sacrifice, uh -huh. then that is not a real blessing uh -huh. or a reward that God gives to you. That's right. A real reward and blessing and power is where you understand loss and cost and sacrifice. Amen. How the Holy Spirit can fill within you is not something where you feel like it's a big thing. It's just sitting alone in a room with probably an 80-year-old grandma who can't really understand you and you can hardly understand her. And then there's only one pastor there and all three of you are just serving Jesus Christ together. Year one, year two. And God's like, I like that church. Not just a church that's, uh, that's just burning flames and just uh, on fire for the Lord, winning souls and grabbing people to church. He also likes those small churches who is just still serving God, just Jesus and me. Amen. Yeah. That's how the Holy Spirit fills within them. Amen. Do you wait on the Lord or do you lack patience? Acts chapter 4, please. <clears throat> Acts chapter 4. I want to rally you up with this last one. Acts chapter 4, verse 31. I hope that the Holy Spirit can fill within this church. Amen. I really hope so. That nothing would hinder the Spirit. Nothing would kill the Spirit. Amen. Verse 31. When they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they spake the word of God with boldness. Amen. Look at this. Verse... 33, and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. Why? And great grace was upon them all. Amen. Look at verse 32. The multitude of them that believed were of one heart and of one soul. <clears throat> Neither said any of them that ought of the things which he possessed was his own. But they had all things common. You know how to be filled with the Holy Ghost? 
where me, me, me is out yeah. and you're thinking about others. Yeah. Maybe a good example where a Holy Spirit can take place in a great church service is where you're setting up a room and you don't have a building yet. And then you just uh, came out of work or you just came out of a family crisis. And you're like saying, people are going to come in late anyway, so why bother coming? But the, God convicted you and you're like, you know what? Pastor needs help. The members need help. So you come in. <clears throat> Here you are setting up the chairs. Setting up the room. Putting a canopy overhead. Going through that tech endless times. Till it just <clears throat> pains you so much that you're turning blue in the face. And that we're just, uh, where we lack the manpower, and that you have to do double the efforts. Maybe, it, uh, maybe it's something like that where it's completely selfless. And then for some weird reason, as soon as the song leader comes up and then opens up the hymn book and without any shade, without any air conditioning... And without anything of me, 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 it's just, let's sing, and then you sing. And then that's why singing just sounds really, really great. And then instead of some off-key notes that you could pay attention to and criticize and complain about, you're so out of self, and you're thinking so much about others, that you're too lost in the happiness of enjoying a great time. Because it's out of self and just others. And then because of that, <clears throat> for some weird reason at a summer camp you're outdoors and it's blazing hot and flies are uh, going around you left and right but for some weird reason you just want to jump out of your seat and run and you see everybody smiling laughing some crying some on the altar praying a little longer than others and then somebody just throwing objects all over the place <laughs> and then at the altar call being filled and then people not thinking about the time or the hour or complaining because self was so much out of the picture that all we're thinking about is others and God. You know how the Holy Spirit can fill within the room? When everyone is of one accord thinking about God. See, when you're so selfless, think getting out of yourself and you're thinking about others and as you and others think about each other, the only thing that you and all these people have in mind is God. And with all in one mind, heart, and soul, God says, I like this. I think I'm going to come down on them and use them. Yeah. Amen. So what, we, what do we need? we need? It's not something where we have to make things more convenient to your schedule, to your comfort level. It's, let me pull up an extra effort. Let me sacrifice more time to be here. Let me make things out of my own norm to help out other people follow up on them on a phone call or reach out to them maybe some brother and sister could say hey I'm praying for you or hey it's good to see you and that much is enough maybe we can make the technology even better maybe we can make our meetings better the ladies meeting the meeting for the children let's just make things even better Maybe, Pastor, he needs more people to take control things and not just him. Maybe I could say, Pastor, yeah, I'll do it. Or maybe I have to volunteer to him rather than him asking me. Maybe if we all did that together, the church could probably become stronger. If not just one person did it, but two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, <laughs> nine, ten, eleven. Imagine if every single person in the room did it. Yeah. Do you think we'll enjoy a great Sunday service? Yeah. Can you imagine a great Wednesday night Bible study with every single person with all one heart and mind and soul? Hey. And that's the reason why some of you won't shut up after church is over and talk till 10, 10 and till 11 till midnight. And you're all so lost in fellowship. You know why? Because of one heart, mind, and soul. Amen. And the Holy Spirit is in this place. Amen. And that's why some visitors and newcomers, when they come here, they say, Look at these people. They just love each other and they just love God. Maybe I should join them too. And then you get one person who joins in the fray and we're like, yeah, come on in. And then it just, the church just grows a little bigger. And the Holy Spirit, he just amped up one more level. Yeah. Amen. That's how the Holy Spirit can fill within this place. 
I want to encourage you as I finish off with this. Every single passage we looked at of how these people were filled with the Holy Ghost. Do you know why? True, it is by because of some of these things that I mentioned to you. But some of those things that they did or what the Lord did would not have filled within them His Holy Spirit had He never said that in His Word to begin with. Because His Word says so, that's the reason why the Holy Spirit has to come in. Let's look at uh, Eldad and Medad, the very first case. <laughs> they were filled with the Holy Ghost. Why? Because it was out of norm. It was out of norm and they did it to serve the Lord. So that's why the Holy Spirit filled within them. Because God likes that. He likes the times where people were, are out of norm or a little overzealous. Why would God fill within them the Holy Spirit? Because, you look at five verses before, God says to Moses, is anything too hard for me? I'm going to make sure that I fill it then with the Holy Spirit. Watch me work. And he, he uses 70 elderly age people to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And then he uses two people who's not even a part of it out of norm to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Let's look at another case, the book of Judges, where the judges were filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. Why were they filled with that power of the Holy Spirit, the judges? Because the people gave a cry to the Lord. But the Lord, he gave in response to their cry, I'm going to raise you up a judge and they will deliver you because of his word that cannot be broken. And he filled within that judge. Amen. Samson's case. Why was he filled within the power of the Holy Spirit? Sure, because he was born with the gift and the talent God gave to him. Amen. But God would not have given him that gift and talent had he not said it to begin with. He gave a promise to Manoah's wife. Amen. My spirit will fill, him, fill within him. Samson says, well, I'm going to use it for the flesh, not for you. And God's like, <laughs> no, I gave a word. I'm going to use it e either way. Yeah. Amen. The Lord Jesus Christ... Why was he filled within the power of the Holy Spirit? So that he can have enough strength to battle the enemy. True. But he would not have been filled within the power had God did not give a promise nearly a millennia or centuries ago to Isaiah, the Spirit of the Lord shall be upon the Messiah. Amen. At the book of Acts chapter 2, why was the first New Testament church filled with thousands of people booming so large? Because they waited on the Lord. True. But they would not have waited on the Lord had not Jesus from his word told them, you have to wait yeah. at Jerusalem. Amen. Why is it that at Acts chapter 4, they were all in one accord, filled with, and they were able to do great things being filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. Well, pastor, it's because they were selfless. They thought about others. They all centered in one thing together, God. True, but that would not have come to pass if Jesus did not give the promise to his disciples through his word. The Holy Spirit will do greater works through you than through me. John chapter 14 through 16. That's what he told them. Yeah. You know why we can be very confident that we can do great things for God in this church age? I'm not saying there will be a last day revival. I'm not saying that the generation is not going to get worse and worse. But the Lord God Almighty, that does not stop His filling power of the Holy Spirit. Just because 99% of the world gets worse and worse does not have to be the 1%. The 1% can be better and better. And that's the Holy Spirit using and filling. You know how? You know why we can be confident in that? He gave a promise. Through his holy word, he says, as a command, as a command, he said through his word, be filled with the Holy Ghost. Can I encourage you in this? Sometimes we may lose a battle now and then in our own personal life, in our temptations, in our own trials, and yes, even to this government. But guess what? We already won the war. Yes. Amen. Now, because we're winners, let's go out and do the task that the Lord has called us to do. COVID-19, the restrictions and people oppressing and attacking does not discourage me. 
And I hope it will not discourage this church or the people who watch online. You know why? God gave a promise. I'm going to use you and I'm going to fill within you. Now get back to work and serve me. Nothing's going to stop you. Amen, every head bow and every eye shut. He gave you a promise. Be encouraged. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. Be filled. Be empowered. Be strengthened. <clears throat> Don't feel down. Don't feel discouraged. Don't feel oppressed. Let the Holy Spirit fill within you. He can fill within these others. And He will fill within you because He gave a promise to you. And that promise is still alive. Will you pray to God today? And will you say to Him, Father, here are my weaknesses that I need to be filled within the power of the Holy Spirit. What is it? Well, one of them. We've covered one of them where you're probably not out of norm. Maybe things you got to do some things that are out of norm now. And not follow the norms of this society. Don't let the... Don't come... Don't comply. Don't follow. Don't be a part of society. Don't compromise with them. <clears throat> Perhaps the next thing is maybe because you did not cry to Him. You did not show Him how much you need Him. And the Lord had to remind you through, this ter through these terrible situations. Cry out to Him. Give your heart to Him. Let Him, let him use you. Let Him know that you need Him. And He'll fill you. Maybe because you're not using the gift and talent that you are born with. Use what you have for the glory of the Lord. You might think it's small, menial, and but you'd be surprised how much it's a blessing to other people. Maybe it's because you never had an anger. You never had an anger against this wicked system or how wicked the doctrine is that is taught in churches. Maybe you need to be angry and you need to see how wicked the world is. You need to see how wicked wrong doctrine is. You need to see how wicked that is and that will motivate you more and the Holy Spirit can fill you. Maybe it's because when, when suffering and trial happens, you quit easily. You complain easily. You get bitter and mad. Instead of relying on God and trusting and having faith in Him, and when you do that, the Holy Spirit fills within you. And those days, you don't feel like the Holy Spirit is filling within you. You don't during the time that Satan's attacking you. But guess what? That's God giving you His grace. Why? Because He filled within you His Holy Spirit weeks ago, months ago, years ago. And you're still carrying on that power. You just didn't quite use it as much yet. Perhaps it's because you, you're impatient. You're overzealous. You get fleshly anger and you don't have things where you can be patient and trust God and wait on His timing. You need to learn to wait and trust in Him. There is an end to the trial. There is an end to the temptation. There is an end to the burden. But you need to cling on to dear life and wait for Him and wait and wait and wait. And the Holy Spirit can fill you, boom, after it's over. Some of you know what I'm talking about. After waiting for years, then the Holy Spirit came in and you're like, man, I've seen the fruit. Perhaps the reason why the Holy Spirit doesn't fill within you is that you're not in one accord. You're so self-centered, not selfless. Get out of self and think about others. And you'd be surprised how much the Holy Spirit can move in. <clears throat> God, my Father, I pray that this sermon has encouraged the people. We need your Holy Spirit power, especially during these dark times, these troubling times. Heavenly Father, thank you so much that we had the privilege today to glorify and honor you and to be able to fellowship and to be able to preach and teach your word. Encourage us as we leave today with the failing power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.